Okay, so I'm going to pick up kind of um, halfway through this editing process so I can show you at least how I do the last part. And um, so you can kind of use that as a reference because once you know how to do one clip, you can pretty much do the rest of them the same way. Um, okay, so I have the first part of a video done already. Um, as you can see, I've you know, I have a bunch of clips that I've changed the speed on and changed the volume on and all of that. So, um, but I have one more section up here that I need to add for the ending. So what I think is the easiest is to just drag the whole clip into the timeline of your movie rather than, um, I mean, you can come up here and just, and select specific clips or, but I think this way is easier and I'm going to show you why. So you see here how I have a bunch of clips. Now if I want to make volume adjustments, make color adjustments, make lighting adjustments, I have to go through and do that on all of them or at the very minimum copy and paste the attributes from one to another. So. I kind of think in general it is easier to just drag the entire clip into your timeline, make global adjustments for saturation, color, lighting, and volume, and then go back and cut out what you don't want. It's just um, the way that I have kind of taught myself to do it, and it's just kind of worked out easier. That being said, I did not know about copying and pasting attributes um, when, when I first started doing this. So, but in general, I just think it's easier. So, to, so I have this big long clip now. So well, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get rid of all the background noise. So just kind of hover over the volume bar here and then drag it down to zero. So all my background noise is now gone. Now I'm going to go and change the length of my clip here so I can see it all. So down here, you know, here's the end. So obviously this is, I'm definitely going to use this part. So it's a good place to like look at my color adjustments. So. I've kind of stopped doing a lot of light adjustments, but I usually bump up my highlights. So what I'll do is I'll come here and I'll go to show color board. And so now I'm going to have, I have my color, my saturation, my exposure, and then it, it's, you can go to each of these represents either global, shadows, midtones, or highlights. So, um, so for exposure, like if you, do global. If your whole clip is too dark, you can use global to bump that up and down. If you want to bring up your shadows, you can do that. Uh, Midtones just does all the middles, leaves your shadows and highlights alone. But highlights is what I tend to do. It just kind of it's kind of the same thing as like adjusting your brightness in Lightroom or Photoshop. So this is already a pretty light dish because of the light plate and the light sauce and all of that. So I'm not going to bump it up too much, just just enough to make it just a little bit brighter. But honestly, it really wasn't too bad to begin with. So I'm only going to bump it up about 5%. Um, saturation, I don't think I adjusted the saturation a whole lot. Let me see. My other clips. I didn't even change the exposure there at all. And I didn't change the saturation. Okay. So I'll probably leave that alone. Color is decent anyway. So now, but if I wanted to, maybe just go to saturation, then you can, you know, bump it up. Um, just that. Make sure you select the right clip. But you see, if you want to adjust the saturation, you can do that there. And again, you can adjust it only in your shadows if you wanted. Um, in this case, the shadows is going to pick up my background. And if I wanted to bring out the blue color of that background, you can see that 
dragging my shadows saturation will increase that while not adjusting everything else as much. Um, and then color, if you're having white balance issues, um, you can do a little bit of fixing that there, but it's, I've discovered that it's just much easier to get your white balance in the right in the camera because it's just, it's a lot harder to fix it in video. It's not like fixing it in photo. Um, okay, so that's how to do your exposure, your saturation, and your color. Um, so now let's talk about how we're going to get rid of probably a good chunk of this. So um, this kind of has like a lot of your different functions, your select, trim, um, and blade. And the ones that I use the most are select and blade. And here are the shortcuts. So A is your select, which is just your arrow. And if I hit B or blade, it gives me this little razor blade. And what I can do is just just kind of scroll along okay so I'm gonna to go to right before the rice comes under the plate and I'm gonna click there you see it made a division there so now I could switch back to my select so either come up here and hit select or you can just hit a on your keyboard and you go back to the arrow and you can delete that um, and you can do that over and over for you know everything that you everything that you want so here you can see that I have like a super long gap where I'm probably going somewhere else to find my chicken so I'm gonna cut out literally like all of that time so I'm gonna cut there and then I'm gonna cut out until right before the chicken comes back in so there and then the chickens coming, more chickens coming. Okay, and then I zoomed in there so I could show the sauce being poured over it. So um, I'm gonna cut it kind of in the middle of that because it might be a nice transition. I can always go back and cut out more, but I'm gonna cut it there so that it scrolls in. And then when it gets to that point, This is going to be all downtime here, so I'm going to cut this, cut all of this out because we're just sitting there and that's boring. Okay, and I'm going to cut here because then it's going to show me pouring the sauce over. And as you can see, I decided I didn't like the way that parsley looked, so I took it back off and just added a sprig. So let's, here's the part where the sauce is. So we'll do that, cut out all this parsley picking part. Cut there, there's my adjustment. And I zoom back out to do a cutting shot. So now I'm gonna kind of watch and see what cutting shot I ended up doing. Probably this one. So this first one I think was. Well, maybe not. It might not be too bad. Okay, so I'm going to cut there. I clearly hit my camera there. there and then I can always go back if I want to add more but I don't think I like that one as much okay so now I'm gonna hit a go back to my arrow and go back and identify all the things that I wanted to cut out so all of this is downtime I cut that and this was good and then It's all down time. 
We're keeping that. We're getting rid of this. We're keeping that. We're getting rid of this. We're keeping that. And keeping that. And then probably getting rid of this. So delete all of these. And then you can come back over here, make your clips longer so it's not so teeny when you're looking at it like that. So now let's go and I'll show you how to adjust the speed. Um, so you can see I've already done that here. So you can just go and select the clips. This is kind of nice because you can do this as a batch. And then um, in this case, I'm just going to hit it to 2x. So it's just twice as fast. Um, for Facebook, I would probably go back and cut this down even more and probably increase the speed. So, um, these videos can only be 15 minutes long, so I have four minutes left. So I'm going to use those four minutes and, um, we'll talk about transitions. Um, so as you see, we've got all of this good stuff. But like from here to here, that's kind of a weird transition. So over here is your transitions menu. So these are all the different um, transitions that you can use. Um, I tend to stick with the cross dissolve, so it just kind of blends in from one to the other. There are others that you can use. Um, I mean, lots of others. And you can do fun or different things with them. Um, like for here, like I could maybe put this in here and I'll show you what that looks like. See, so it kind of just flashed. But if I change that to cross dissolve and just replace it, I need to go back and adjust the color in that shot because I don't like it. See, I've just kind of blended into the other. Um, my computer kind of lagged out there, so that's why I did that. Um, but you see how even in that clip there's kind of some downtime, so I'll probably go back and I'll, I'll cut that out as well. Like all this time when literally nothing's happening, people will find that boring. So um, all of this time, I'll go back and cut out even more. Um, and so that's how you add the transitions. So I kind of do that um, in any time where, um, like, I think here, let me see. Oh, I just did there. <coughs> Sorry. My whole computer's frozen. There we go. Um, I need to close light room. Okay. So um, from here where I start whisking and then I cut out all the time when I was whisking because it's just kind of downtime. This is a good place to add a cross dissolve because then it will, since everything is in the same place, it will just kind of fade into um, the finished whisk, whisking mixture. mixture. See, it just kind of faded into the same point. So that's good. Um, and then just real quickly, so if you come up here, it's going to pull up music from iTunes. So if you download music from like Ben Sound or um, Real Trophy Music or something like that, you can go and search for it there and then you just drag it into your timeline. And then here is where you can do um, different titles. So um, there's lots of different titles that you can add into it. And once you do that, um, you can change the font and all of that over here. 